Hello everybody, Colin here. Today's more scratch project is about growing a dragonfly. Let's get coding. So as per normal, I'm going over to the Raspberry Pi projects. We're going to go for code club and we're going to go for the new paths they've got this link here and grow a dragonfly and there's an animation here of the project we're going to make basically we're controlling the dragonfly and we're going to eat the flies and as we're eating the flies we're making a noise And I'm controlling this by just moving the mouse pointer around. Dragonfly is getting bigger. I'm getting better at this game. And the game ends when it gets to full size. So uh, that's the operate object of the game. There's a starter project here. This project, although it says there's a starter project, the project is empty. So it's just a, basically a brand new um, project. So we can just go to um, File and New. And we have a fresh new project to start. Let's call this Grow the Dragonfly. Get rid of that tab behind it. Um, pressing Windows and uh, no, no. I'm going to pull that tab down and then do Windows and right arrow key. To my instructions, windows and left arrow key, switch them over. And that's our set that's our setup to continue. So first thing we do is we're going to set the scene. So choose your backdrops so and the backdrops are down here on the bottom right hand corner. Looks like they've gone for a desert. No, it's, it doesn't matter which back, back, backdrop you do. I'm going to click the desert one. The one they've used is Jurassic. I can see that down there now. Uh, I'm going to go for desert, delete the cat. And then I'm going to add a dragonfly. There's a dragonfly. Quick look at the costumes the dragonfly has got. Okay, so there's a little flutter on the wings there, flitting between the two costumes. And um, we're going to set it up so when this starts, it's starting at a quarter of the size that it um, that it is now. So on the code page, when the green flag is ticked, clicked, set size, and size is under looks. Set size to 25%. I want a forever loop and uh, we're going to put move towards mouse, mouse, mouse pointer, uh, point towards mouse pointer and then move five steps. So those are the initial settings for this project and let's test that. So look, my butter, my uh, Oh, he looks a bit funny, doesn't he? He's not quite, uh, it doesn't seem to be quite right. So I expect we'll fix that in a moment. Um, let's press the stop button to stop him chasing me around. So the dragonfly costume is not facing to the right, so the head of the dragonfly is not pointing towards the mouse pointer. Click on the costumes tab and we're going to rotate the um, butterfly as per the instructions there. So click on the costumes, I'm going to do select everything, I'm going to just spin him round to the right, do the same on the other one, spin it round to the right, uh, press the green flag, oh that's better, look he's following the um, He's following my mouse pointer now, so that's good. Just stop. So we're going to add a um, 
a, 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 a fluttering sound now using the crank sound so on the sounds tab i'm going to go for and choose a sound i'm going to pick crank let's have a little listen to what crank sounds like without any interference okay so we're being told now that's too long for um, our purposes so we're going to uh, copy a section of the uh, sound and then we're going to cut that copy to new so there's a button here copy to new and that's been renamed crank 2 but we're going to call that wings so that sounds like shall we okay so click the faster button until it sounds how you want it to sound do for me um, we can get rid of the funny bit on the end there again so we can click on here just highlight that and then press uh, delete and now we're going to add that sound into our forever loop so back to our code and under the sound option we're going to play sound wings so this should play that sound all, all the way through the game. There we go. Possibly it's a little bit too loud. So go back to my sound. Now click on Wings 2. Just make that a little bit softer. Click my Go button. Okay. If you wanted to make your... um. Um, drag and fly a little bit faster come back to the code let's just experiment with changing that to say to 10 let's see what difference that makes okay not bad I'm going to add in there a mood change costume because I've got two costumes to play with so under looks I can do next costume And now he looks like he's flashing his wings, flapping his wings. Okay, I'm going to leave that at 10. I quite like that. Um, press the save now button and that's project saved. Oh, what we're going to do is we're going to go to get, get the frog. So we're going to add a frog. Sprite. Frog. And... Uh, this one's got a fly on it in the costume. There's a frog there. So we're going to uh, highlight the fly. We're going to do copy. And then we're going to make a new costume. Go back a minute, press the wrong button. Uh, we're going to do a new costume but we're going to create it from painting i'm just going to go in the middle here and i'm going to do uh, paste and i'm going to uh, drag my bug into the middle of the screen there and i'm going to call it insect and they're recommending we make the fly bigger but we can get rid of these other um, costumes now. We just need all we were doing was pinching the fly. Let's call it insect over there as well. And they say change the size to 150. So 150. Right, so there's our fly. If he's a little bit difficult to see, we could always um, change the fill color of his wings a bit brighter. You could have two different coloured wings, couldn't you? 
Okay, let's make him a modern, a modern fly. Now we're going to make him um, just keep going around the screen. So we'll go back to his code page and click the when green flag is clicked. I want a forever loop. Forever. Move three spaces. And if on edge, bounce. It's down the bottom here. Let's see what that does to the fly. It's going in a straight line, backwards and forwards. Not very exciting at the moment. And uh, that's what we're going to um, change that. So now we're going to make it look as if um, when the dragonfly touches the fly, um, it's going to hide. So we're going to add in an if statement now. We want one with the uh, prism block in, which is where we're going to add a an operator. And we want to do if touching dragonfly, then hide. Oh, that's under sensing my mistake there. So if touching dragonfly hide, hide is under the looks block. I'm just going to pop hide in there. Um, problem with our code now, though, is if we just do it once, um, he's hidden now, he doesn't reappear. So we've got to program in so that when he um, so we're going to program in so that when the game starts, we need to show him. So we always have a, like a initialization part of the process. And then uh, we're going to add this bit of code here, which is going to make the fly go to a random position. Uh, so that's under motion. Go to random position inside the loop there. Wait, which is under control. Wait one second. And then show. That's that as we go along. Pop, that's him gone. And he's went to a random position. I can catch him again. Get, keep me eating him. So that's good. Uh, save our project. Well, the project saves automatically as you go along because the save button has disappeared at the moment for me. So the next thing is we're going to make the dragonfly increase in size. We want it to stop when it gets to um, its biggest size. And we're going to use the broadcast function that we used last time. So each time the fly gets eaten, we're going to uh, broadcast a message that says food. So that's under control. And no, that's un yes, it is. No, it's, no, it's under it's under and it's an event. So we're going to broadcast a message. That's going to go in here. Change the message there to be um, food. And then back on our dragonfly um, page, we're going to add it. Clicking on the dragonfly code, we're going to add when I receive food, change my size by five. Looks change size by five, and we're going to add a chomp sound um, when that happens as well. So, back to the sounds, come down here, do a search for chomp, let's test that out, shall we? Yep, that sounds good to me back to our code um, sound play uh, start sound chomp okay that's looking good to me and is our dragonfly getting bigger let's have a look Dragonfly is definitely getting bigger, but at this rate, he's just going to keep going bigger and bigger and bigger. And the big we can make it go. Oh, 
I'll let you experiment with that, but I think you can go to fill the screen. I'll just press stop there. I'm just going to drag him down. Um, I can set his size here to say something like 500. Actually, the biggest size he can go is 252, it looks like. I'll try 9999. Falls back to 252, so that's the biggest size he can go. Anyway, we're going to change that so he stops when his size equals 100. And so we're going to get um, an if statement now. So if, let's build this up over here. We want the equal sign. So we're going to say if um, size equals 100, there's a built-in variable called size, which we can get under the looks block. So let's pop that in there. If size equals 100, Then we're going to broadcast the message to say end, and I got to full start size. So let's pop that on the bottom of our when I receive food. Broadcast end. So that will be an event. Let's go to program. New message will be end. We're going to make him say and uh, just say I've got to, yeah, I made it to full size. Hey, I made it to full size. And then we're going to broadcast a stop message, 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 broadcast a stop. Uh, other sprite scripts in sprite change that from all and um so that's going to be uh, when the the butterfly uh, so button the um that's going to be when the dragonfly gets to full size okay so what we can do just just for the purpose of testing um i'm just going to change that up to size box there up to 80% and I'm going to press run. My dragonfly is quite big. Two, three, four. But what's happening now is our um, butterfly, butterfly, our fly is still, that's still moving. Um, so I need to put some stop instructions on the, uh, on the insect. So go to the insect, and when I receive end, when I receive end. And add that stop option on there. Stop other scripts in Sprite. Uh, let's save now. Let's just do a little run there. One, two, three. Okay, so that works perfectly now. So it stopped everything on the on the project. Must remember to go back to my dragonfly and change that back to 25 when I start. My dragonfly is looking a bit glitchy, so we're going to try and fix that glitchiness. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to um, change our script here. Oh no, yeah, dragonfly, it's this script here by adding an if statement inside that. So we're going to get the if, and we're just going to drag all of those bits of code there inside the loop and pop that back. So we're building up as they're showing here. Start the sounds wing, point towards the mouse pointer, oh, and move five, st uh, move five steps. I add in that next costume. Uh, I'm just going to leave that in here at the moment to see what happens. And then we're going, to, we're going to drag in an if not touching mouse pointer then. So sensing, uh, we want a conditional statement here that says not. So let's just test what happens now. So now when I, when my mouse, when my mouse is on touching the, um, the mosquito, uh, so the dragonfly, it doesn't it doesn't do that flicking backwards and forwards. 
Okay. So let's fix that glitch. There's another way of doing that by putting a range thing on the um, dragonfly to say if it's if um, the distance to the mouse pointer is greater than 50. Let's just try that, shall we? Just so you can see. So we want the greater than and uh, distance to uh, distance to mouse pointer is greater than 50. Let's see the difference that makes. That quite has the same effect. It's just another way of doing it. Um, save our project. Add some more food. The dragonfly needs a choice of insects. So what we're just going to do is we're going to duplicate our insect here. Right click and duplicate. We've got insect two. And we're going to go to the uh, costumes tab of number two. Let's uh, change his wing colours. Um, yeah, we could go and get something else and add that in as well. Um, but I'm just going to change the colours from here. Turn that on to that. Let's change this head to a different colour as well. go we can draw a line on his wing just make him look different really and the other thing I thought I could do there is just make him a little bit bigger let's stretch him this way shall we so he's a bit more like a Okay, so we've got two um, insects now. And because we duplicated that one, we should find that um, when I press the go button now, um, we've got two butterflies, uh, we've got two insects on the screen, and the code still works. So there's a problem, well it's not a problem, but there's a, an extra conundrum with our game in that um, even if the dragonfly um, wings touch the insect, it gets eaten. So we're going to add some code in that says if it's, we're going to change this code here, I've, I've got insect 2 selected, we're going to change this line here to say if touching the colour, if sorry, if touching the dragonfly and touching a colour, um, to, to then run that bit of code. So we need to, um, I've taken out the if touching dragonfly, we want to get the operator one, we want to get an and statement in here. So if touching dragonfly and touching color, so that's touching color there. And what we can do is we can um, change the colour here to be the colour of the, the uh, mosquito uh, mouth. I'm just going to drag the, man, the man dragonfly down so I can get to its mouth. So I'm selecting the insect again and if I click on here and then use the pipette thing here I can then go over to my dragonfly and then select the colour of his uh, So now, if I press run now, my, uh, it's got to be my mouth that touches. So, so for the number two, number for the number, the uh, second uh, mosquito um, insect I made, it was only when the mouth was touching. So I need to add that same bit of um, code to uh, the other insect. In fact, what they're suggesting here is we actually change the color of the I want to say proboscis, but uh, just call it the mouth, the uh, dragonfly's mouth. Right, so I'm going to change the colour of the mouth part of my um, um, mosquito head. Um, what I can do is I'm just going to make my project bigger. And they're going to click on the head. And I'm then going to click on this ungroup option up here. 
and I should find I can just select different parts of it. There we go. So I double clicked on that there. Then I'm going to go for the fill button. I'm going to select a color and uh, I'm make a color up. That do. So that's going to be my color of my um, nose. That's good to me. And now I need to recode my insect and come back to his code. And if touching color, pick that up. Aim from his nose. Uh, that now means that that uh, insect will disappear. That bit of code there will run when that that's when he's touching his nose. Uh, I'm going to drag that. I'm just going to come down here and just gonna drop it. You see the tile shape? Let go. Come back on there, and there it is on there. And I'm just going to get rid of that bit. Pop that in there, and my game should be significantly harder now because I've changed the score and the way the score works. Okay, let's test that. We just we just tested that. Save that. What we're going to do now is we're going to add some random movement for our insects, and that's just going to simply add a little bit of code that says when the green flag is clicked. I've got I've got my insect two selected. When the green flag is clicked, forever. Um, point in direction and then a weight block oops and we're going to add in a couple of random blocks there that's under operators random uh, one to three in the bottom one and random well oh, come on random uh, zero two two five nine press the green flag and now what you should see is that our insects are changing direction but don't chase them they start changing direction on their own um it's only working on the second one because that's the one i've coded but let's just quickly add that bit of code to the first one just drag that tile shakes drop it there Let's check it's arrived. Yeah, if I right click on my desktop, I can add um, clean up blocks that just lines the blocks up nicely. Same on the next page. Same on my dragonfly. There we go. Press the green flag, and now you should see both my um, insects are moving in a random direction at random intervals. Cool. I stop. Oh, uh, yeah. Make it big so you can see it happening. That's a good one. Come on, jump, jump. So, um, as per the last project, there's a reflection piece on here, a reminder about the different blocks we've used. And a number of questions that I'll let you answer those. Well, I hope you enjoyed that uh, little project of growing a dragonfly. Um, we've used most of the blocks within the Scratch project. Um, the next project is a game where we're going to be making a drum and we're going to earn beats to play new drums and bigger venues. Right, see you in the next video. Bye!